Hey everyone, welcome to Sarah's Cross-Dressing Stories. Today I'm going to share with you Sister's Plan and My Beginning, Part 22. If you're new to the channel then please subscribe now for more captivating stories and, please support me on Patreon and get early access at patreon.com slash sarah101. Over the next few hours, I must have tried on 25 dresses. I love them all, and Grandma appeared to be having a good time just watching me enjoy trying on all the beautiful clothes. Grandma had me stand, turn and walk in all of them. Along with each dress a clerk brought accessories such as shoes, purses, hats and gloves. I felt like a model at a fashion show. No sooner was one dress lifted off of me than another was pulled over my head. Then Grandma had me try on skirts, blouses, and sweaters. Nancy, the store manager, came over to talk to her for a minute, then left. When I modeled the next outfit, Grandma said, Kathy called looking for you. I said that we would wait here for her. Oh, that outfit is delightful. Try on this other one that I selected. Several outfits later, Auntie came in and was with Grandma when I came out of the changing room. She looked at me and smiled, Darla and, you look beautiful. I love the new hairdo and the outfit. I smiled, thank you, Auntie. I asked Janet if she could do my hair like yours. She did the best that she could even though it wasn't really long enough to be just like yours. I love it though. Darla and, turn around and walk for me. Yes, Grandma, I noticed that Auntie raised an eyebrow when I said Grandma, but I didn't say anything. After two more changes and my runway modeling for Grandma, Auntie said, that's enough, Darla and. Make a selection. We have to be going. The store will be closing soon. I had tried on so many beautiful things that it was difficult to decide, but I had particularly liked a mauve party dress. Grandma had the clerk retreated along with shoes, purse, gloves, and hat. I put it on again and modeled it for Grandma and Auntie. They both nodded their approval of my selection. Grandma asked if I would like to wear it home and I quickly said yes. The clerk wrapped my other dress and shoes and handed me the box. We walked to the front door together, but Grandma said that she had to pick up something else before we left, so we parted at the door. I hugged her and kissed her and said, Grandma, thank you for the beautiful outfit and the wonderful day. I shall never forget it. You're most welcome, my dear. You know that you're my favorite granddaughter. We smiled at the inside joke, kissed again, and then Auntie and I left. As we drove away, Auntie said, Grandma? I looked at her and told her what Mabel had said in the car before going into the clothes. She's been so wonderful to me, I feel like she's my grandma. It feels natural calling her that. And if it makes her happy, then it makes me happy. Darla and only you could win the heart of Mabel more in just one day. Grandma it is then. You don't suppose that she'll want me to call her mother, do you? We both giggled. When we arrived home, Auntie thought that I should change out of the party dress. I loved it so much that I didn't want to, but I knew that she was right. I would want it to remain perfect for a special occasion. I changed into my pink skirt and blouse outfit. While I was changing, I sat at my makeup table and studied my face. I tried to remember everything that Janet had done to my face with makeup so that I could repeat it since she had done such a wonderful job. I completed changing and went to the upstairs kitchen. Auntie was browning ground meat when I entered the kitchen. She said that she had developed a hankering for good old Texas chili today. 
If you are going to live in Texas, you have to know how to cook a good chili, she said. My Gabby loved my chili. Every gal in Texas has her own special recipe for chili. I'll show you mine, and then you can experiment with different ingredients until you find a recipe that suits you. When you get married, your husband will probably want you to make his mother's recipe, unless he thinks that yours is better. But that hardly ever happens, because he grew up with hers and he's used to it. So what you do is take her recipe and very slowly change it over several years until you're back to your own recipe. Your husband will never know the difference if the change is gradual enough. Of course, your husband may have his own recipe. Chili is one thing that our men don't mind cooking, that and barbecues. The rest of the time though, they figure that cooking is a woman's work. She showed me the spices that should be added and told me the proper quantities of them and the other ingredients. I carefully followed her directions as she stood at my shoulder the entire time. When we were finished, we put the pot on a trivet which had been placed in the center of the table and sat down to eat. The chili was no less than fantastic. I told her that I understood why Gabby had loved it so. I told her that she should do it and sell it around the world. She laughed and said that that was high praise indeed. I told her that I would love to eat more, but that I was afraid that I would not fit into my new dress anymore. She said that it was okay because her chili was even better when reheated. We put it in plastic containers and stored them in the refrigerator's freezer for another night. We cleaned the kitchen and put on our nighties before going down to the theater. There wasn't much on TV that night, but we watched for an hour before deciding to retire. We walked upstairs together, with our arms around each other's waist, kissed cheeks, and said good night as I entered my bedroom and she continued down to hers. That night I dreamed that a pirate captured me as I traveled to the Caribbean. He killed everyone on the ship on which I was a passenger except me. I struck at him when he tried to kiss me, and I kicked him when he laughed at my feeble blow. He grabbed me, tied my hands behind me, and tied my ankles so that I couldn't kick him any more. Then he took me to his cabin and tied me to a support post. He said that I would stay like that until I willingly submitted to him. I uttered an oath and spit at him and so he gagged me. He lay down on his bed and slept as I hung in my bonds. The next day, a cannon sounded, and within minutes a pitched battle was underway. A British man-of-war defeated the pirate ship. As the pirate ship started to sink, a young British officer found me and cut the ropes that held me to the support post. I fell into his arms, and he tossed me over his shoulder, still bound and gagged. The ship was going down fast, as he grabbed a rope and swung us across to the British ship. When we were on the deck of the man-of-war, the captain approached and the young officer saluted him and said, I recovered a captive, sir. Very good, Mr. Booth. Take her below. I, I, Captain. Once again I was thrown over his shoulder, like a sack of potatoes, and taken below decks to a cabin. He laid me on the bunk and got a pan of water and a washcloth. He began to gently wash my face and neck. I just lay there as he worked. When he was done, he sat on the edge of the bunk just staring at me and telling me how beautiful I was and how lovely my hair was. I mewled through my gag until he removed the sash that had been wrapped around my head and the sopping wad of cloth that had filled my mouth. I worked my mouth to get some feeling back into it. I said, Mr. Booth, will you untie my hands and ankles, please? There's nowhere to run to, and you have no need for you hands right now, he said. Aren't you going to reward me for saving your life? 
Then he lifted me partially up and bent to kiss me. I awoke and found myself once again in my own bed and completely unfettered. I thought about this dream and the others that I had been having. I wondered if there was a deeper meaning. Susan and Judy had told me that most girls have such dreams, but I wasn't ever going to get to enjoy the kiss without waking up. Well, maybe next time, I said to myself. I can hardly wait, I added, then giggled. Saw from the clock that it was almost time to get up. I went to the bathroom and ran a bath. While the tub was filling, I made my bed and I got out the white dress that I had worn yesterday. I still only had three outfits, my pink skirt and blouse, Susan's white dress, and the new loaf party dress. I had washed my undies last night and hung them in the clothes room to dry. I slipped into the bath and luxuriated in the warm water for a while, then washed myself before exiting the tub. I dressed and put on my makeup. I managed a better job than before by incorporating the tips that I had learned from watching Janet. I brushed my hair and it sprang into place almost immediately. I sprayed some perfume, stepped in it, and I was ready to greet the day. I went to the kitchen, squeezed some fresh orange juice, made a pot of tea, mixed a bowl of pancake batter, cut a cantaloupe into slices, and put a frying pan on low heat in preparation for making the pancakes. I set the table, put the cantaloupe on it, and added maple syrup to the condiments. Then I sat down and read one of Auntie's women's magazines until she came in. I turned up the heat on the frying pan and in a minute it was ready to cook the pancakes. I poured the batter, waited until the bubbles formed and popped, then flipped them over until they were a golden brown. I made three pancakes for each of us, then turned off the stove and carried the dishes to the table. Auntie was just finishing her OJ as she checked over her schedule for the day. She said that she had been able to do a lot of catching up over the past three days, so her schedule would start to be a little bit more relaxed now, and within two weeks should be back to normal. We ate the pancakes, munched on the cantaloupe, and drank a final cup of tea. She was about to get up to leave when the front door bell rang. She looked at me and said, I wonder who that can be at this hour. We walked downstairs and answered the door. A delivery man was standing there. Bliss residence? he asked. Yes, my aunt said. I have a delivery for Darla and Drake. Auntie looked at me and I shrugged my shoulders while raising my forearms, palms up, in a gesture to show that I didn't know anything about it. She looked back at the deliverer man and said, Who is the shipper? Xavier's clothing store. Okay, I'll take it for her. Where do I sign? Right here, Mrs. Bliss. After she had signed, he took the clipboard and asked, Where would you like it put? I'll take it. It's rather large, Mrs. Bliss. Very well, up the stairs, turn left, then the first room on the left. Okay, ma'am, he said and walked out the door. A different deliverer man wheeled in a handcart with an enormous box. Another delivery man walked behind him and together they struggled to carry it up the stairs. We walked behind them up the stairs. Auntie said, it looks like Grandma selected a couple of other things for you after we left. They carried the box into my bedroom and put it against the far wall. I thought it a little strange that with the entire room to put it in, they should put it so far out of the way. Then two more delivery men carried another box in. Then two more with another box. Then the first two were back again. 
Auntie just stood there with her mouth open as box after box was brought in until more than a half dozen of the enormous boxes and several dozen small ones were stacked up in the room. Auntie got her wallet and gave a generous tip to each deliverer man. The head deliverer man handed me a card and said, Compliments of Mrs. Moore. Thank you, I told him and smiled at him. He smiled back and said, My pleasure, Mississippi. If you'll just call the store when you've unpacked, we'll be happy to pick up the empty cartons. Good day. Good day, we said, and then they were gone. I opened the card and read aloud, You looked so lovely in all these outfits that I just couldn't resist getting them for my favorite granddaughter. Signed, Grandma. P.S. I added a few incidentals to round out your new wardrobe. Did I say, win her heart yesterday? Auntie said. Obviously, I was understating the affection that she seems to feel towards you. She told me that she's lonely in her big, empty house. I can certainly understand that. Her husband passed away many years ago, and she has no children. She told me that her daughter died in childhood. That I didn't know, but then I've only known Mabel for about eight years. She appears to have opened her heart to you quite a bit. We had a long talk yesterday at the salon. I was afraid of boring her, but she kept encouraging me to talk, so I did. Whatever, you said, she apparently took a real liking to you. This is a substantial wardrobe. Do you feel that you should accept it? No, much as I would love to, I wouldn't want to take advantage of her friendship. Let's call her then and tell her that we have to send it back. We went into Aunt's bedroom to place the call. As she dialed, Auntie said, We'll have to put a phone in your room. The connection is already there, it just has to be plugged in. Hello, Mrs. Moore please, Catherine Bliss calling. The housekeeper is seeing if she's awake yet. Good morning, Mabel, your little surprise just arrived. Yes, she's overjoyed with the gift, but she doesn't feel that she can accept it. It's too much. Uh-huh. 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 Oh, Mabel, are you really sure? Very well, Mabel, of course. When? Tomorrow? Noon? Okay, Mabel, we'll see you then. Goodbye, Mabel. Auntie put down the phone and said she absolutely refuses to let the clothes be returned. She said that you both went through too much work to select them, and she insists that you keep them. Besides, some of them have been altered already to fit you. So I guess that you're stuck with them, sweetheart. Also, she wants us to come for lunch tomorrow, and she told me to bring the contracts that I've been trying to get her to sign for the oil drilling rights on her big ranch. Darla and, if she signs them, then the credit all goes to you. I put a pouty look on my face and said, I guess if I am stuck with all those clothes, I might as well make the best of it. That's all for now, see you in the next video. Please share your valuable opinion and please support me on Patreon to get the early access. Link in the first comment.